Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and you are watching my complete AP Chemistry course as we are moving on to Unit 3, Section 3. And as we see these two pictures here, I have a question for you. For most of you, it's probably a fairly simple question. Which one of these is a solid? And if you answered the one on the left over here, you would be correct. And maybe you answered that for different reasons. Maybe you saw that the uh, atoms or the particles are very, very close to each other in that picture. So that is a tip off that that's the solid. And we also know that we have this nice orderly crystalline pattern. That's a good sign of a solid as well. Whereas we just don't have that in the picture here on the right. You know, true solids are crystalline in structure. So we've talked about uh, ionic solids, other solids, uh, covalent network solids, how they have this nice crystalline structure. Even most uh, of these uh, molecular solids have that crystal structure. Think of ice, right? Think of snowflakes, beautiful crystals. Um, we call this a crystal lattice, a very orderly structure where it repeats itself. Now, there are some solids that aren't exactly crystalline, but they have other properties of solids. Uh, for example, if we want to think of a piece of plastic, uh, or possibly uh, other materials uh, that you know are kind of like a solid, but they're not really a solid. Like for example, I think plastics are a, a good example. Uh, a piece of paper, that's another one. It seems to be somewhat solid. It's not flowing or anything like that, but it certainly, it certainly has some properties of solids. It may have a structure kind of like this, where it's not really crystalline, but the molecules pretty much have a place. These are called amorphous materials. And they're not true crystalline solids, but we can, we can call them a type of solid. Amorphous materials can be considered a type of solid. Uh, they're almost in that gray area between solid and liquid. They have some, some properties of liquids, but they're, they're, they're more solid. These materials are best described as amorphous, and so that would include things like plastics, uh, things like, uh, you know, like I said, a piece of paper. Uh, perhaps uh, some people would even describe glass as being somewhat amorphous as well. Now, let's take a look at another couple of pictures here. Which one here is a gas? And if you answered the picture on the right, you would be correct. And why is that a gas? Well, a couple of reasons. You can see that the molecules are spaced much farther apart in a gas, aren't they? Whereas over here, the molecules are squished pretty close to each other. So this is probably a liquid in the picture on the left. Also, we have these little streaks behind each molecule, which implies that they're moving fairly quickly. And as we know, gas molecules will most likely be moving f faster than molecules of a liquid, higher temperature. You know, when we say gas or gas molecules, gas molecules tend to be very far apart from each other. In a solid, the molecules are very close to each other. They're just vibrating against each other. They are in this nice crystalline pattern most of the time. In a liquid, the molecules are a little bit farther apart, and they have just enough space between them so that they can slip and slide past one another. That's why a liquid can flow. On the other hand, gas molecules are very far apart from each other. In fact, they're so far apart from each other that they hardly have anything to do with each other at all. They're pretty much independent of each other. And because gas molecules are so far apart, we're actually able to physically squeeze some of the molecules closer to each other. And we can compress a gas. You may have tried this before if you have taken like a, a medicine dropper and you've uh, uh, stuck your finger over the, the, the end of it, you can push it down, push the air down there, and actually compress the gas. Uh, in fact, a gas is the only one of our three main states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas, that can be compressed very much and also can expand to fill a container. You can't do that with a solid or a liquid. Now, all gases have four properties 
that you need to be aware of. And these are the four properties that we're going to be uh, manipulating as we go into our next section in uh, Unit 3, Section 4 to talk about gas laws. The first, pre uh, the first property is pressure. And you probably have an understanding of what pressure is. Pressure is determined by how often the gas molecules are colliding with the walls of the container. That's basically what determines pressure. So if you're able to uh, somehow maybe compress down the, the volume or maybe make the, the molecules move faster by heating it up, well, those molecules hit the container walls more often, and that increases the pressure. So that's what pressure is. And of course, uh, there are several units for pressure, like atmospheres, uh, kilopascals, uh, such as like that. Uh, we have others as well. Volume. Volume is a property of all gases. It's the amount of space that the gas takes up. We usually measure volume in liters. Uh, in the SI framework, they often use cubic meters, but uh, a cubic meter is such a large volume, we usually keep it in liters in, in AP chemistry and general chemistry. Now temperature, this is another important property of all gases. It's a measure of the average kinetic energy of the molecules. Whenever you see the phrase average kinetic energy, right there, that is a fancy phrase that is interchangeable with temperature. That is what that means. Average kinetic energy is the same thing as temperature. And kinetic energy involves uh, two factors, the mass and the velocity. In physics, we know that kinetic energy is mass times velocity squared divided by two. You don't really have to do that much uh, with kinetic energy in AP chemistry. You just have to know its mass and velocity. If you take a golf ball and drop it on your foot, it's probably not going to hurt you. If you take a bowling ball and drop it on your foot, it probably is going to hurt you because it has a greater mass. So more energy being transferred to your foot. On the other hand, velocity. If you take a golf ball and you just drop it on your foot, it's not going to hurt. But if you take a golf ball and shoot it out of a of a uh, some sort of a propeller at I, I don't know 100 meters per second and it's really going to hurt because the velocity is higher so it's transferring more energy to your foot so those are the two factors that go into kinetic energy uh, temperature the molecules are moving faster at, at a higher temperature now the fourth property of all gases would be just how much gas you have how many gas molecules there are. And as we've stated earlier in this course, back in Unit 1, we normally don't measure this in actual number of, of molecules because it would it's kind of ridiculous to count molecules. We count them in moles. And so we'll talk about you know half a mole, one mole, 0.75 moles. And that's how we talk about how much gas we actually have. So in the next lesson, or the next section, we're going to see how we can uh, manipulate these four properties, pressure, volume, temperature, and the amount of gas to, uh, to change the other properties as well. Hope you learned something here about the properties of, of solids and uh, gases as well in this section. If you learned something, please uh, give me a thumbs up. And I hope to see you in my next video in which we're going to get started with gas laws in Unit 3, Section 4. Thanks for watching.